My name is Andrew Jones, I'm VP of Engineering of ELAC in Americas and I'm here today to talk about the brand new ELAC Unify 2.0. The first thing I'd like to talk about with the Unify is that it's a three-way system. Three-way systems are not very common at this price point and also what's not common is having a concentric driver and a three-way at this price point. Now there are reasons I can discuss later about why a three-way with a concentric driver but in particular what does a three-way system do for you uh, in comparison for example for, from a two-way. Now a two-way system is the minimum subdivision of a signal in order to optimize the performance um, of a speaker trying to reproduce the whole spectrum from low bass to high by using a bass driver and a tweeter, each dedicated in its design uh, to optimize its performance for that particular frequency range. So what does a three-way do that improves over a two-way? We see two ways all over the place, including obviously our debut speakers, and two ways can do excellent results. But very often, a three-way, if designed correctly, can take the performance further. And that's because the bass driver can be designed to handle only the low bass. Then the mid-range is dedicated to the important range from a couple of hundred hertz up to a couple of thousand, and the tweeter beyond that. And it's particularly noticeable when you're trying to reproduce low bass as well as mid-range vocals. Uh, depending on the, the design, you can hear some modulation effects between the two signals if they're sim simultaneous. So by splitting into three-way, we can get around the issue and improve the performance. Now, in order to get the optimum results out of a three-way system, we obviously need a crossover network, and clearly it's going to be more complex than the crossover network required for a two-way system. Now, in the Unify, that's certainly the case. And this is an example. This is the Unify crossover. So very complex, but it has a job to do. It has to properly filter the signals going to the bass driver, the mid-range and the tweeter. It has to equalize the drivers to perform to their best. It also has to present an easy load to the amplifier. Now in the original Unify, we had a four ohm rated loudspeaker. And that had a minimum of 3.4 ohms at somewhere around 150 hertz. And so it was not the easiest speaker to drive. And so you needed a, a, a good power amplifier to drive it. Well, in the redesign for 2.0, we've been able to re-engineer that crossover and re-engineer the drive units and attain a 6 ohm rated impedance. And it's an easy 6 ohms. It only drops to its minimum over one small fraction of the frequency range. And so we end up with a speaker that's much easier to drive than the original. At the same time, we were able to engineer extra componentry in the crossover to improve the response linearity, improve the integration between the drivers. So overall that complexity allows us to give a much better overall performance than we had with the original version. For Unify 2.0, we've developed a brand new concentric driver. So obviously based on the original, but with a significant number of improvements. So the first thing to notice, we have a new tweeter. This is based on the work we did with Adante in developing a, a wide range tweeter. And when I say wide range, I mean it goes out higher and lower. Now, why is that important? Well, when we study a loudspeaker and we look at its high end frequency response, um, we see claims and we make them ourselves of extended response well out beyond 20 kilohertz, 30 kilohertz, 35, 40, 50. 
what is the importance of that? Is the importance simply that we want to try and reproduce those frequencies because we can capture them now on high-res formats? Or is it more in my way of thinking that very often traditional tweeters, particularly traditional soft dome tweeters, although claimed to go out to 20k, what that meant was they were 3 or maybe even 6 dB down on axis at 20k. Now, if you engineer a tweeter to go out to 30 or 40k, what that means is it won't already be falling off by 20k. So you're actually more interested in improving the performance at the top end of the working range, at around 20k, than you are of what's going on above that. It's a sort of a byproduct, but it means that we guarantee the performance out beyond 20k to be at the same level as the lower frequencies and also maintain it a better off axis which is also important because we often listen to speakers off axis so the way we've done it is to put a wide roll surround on the tweeter which uh, sort of is counterintuitive but it does give us a more extended top end response as well as giving us a more extended low frequency range from the tweeter and that allows us better choices of how we integrate to the mid-range unit in order to do this, we had to design a new magnet system, obviously a new dome surround, and this is larger physically than the tweeter we have in the original Unify. Therefore, we had to engineer a new mid-range driver to go with it. So we took the opportunity to make some improvements in the mid-range at the same time. One of which obviously is it requires a larger voice coil so the tweeter will fit within the voice coil and that needs a new cone developed to match to that voice coil size. So we've got a new cone still made of aluminum. We have a new cone profile and because the voice coil size is larger, a wholly newly designed neodymium magnet structure to go with that and also a new surround. Um, We've taken care with the surround to minimize any disruption of the sound wave as it propagates from the tweeter and also played around with the stiffness the shape the thickness of the surround to lower the resonant frequency of the mid-range unit so once again we have more freedom of where we cross it over to the low frequency when we cross over to the woofer so a lot of changes in the performance and engineering of this new concentric driver We've once again re-engineered the base unit, recognising that the base unit in this three-way system is basically a base pump. We don't have to worry too much about mid-range performance. We can look at what it has to do to handle the frequencies, in this case below 200 Hz, because we've lowered the crossover point from the original 280 Hz down to 200. And uh, along with that, we have improved the linearity of the woofer and we've changed the cone profile from a two-part cone construction to a stiffer single part cone so improves the stiffness we've got better linearity and you can see huge magnet and a large bent hole for the air trapped under the cone so great new base driver we've now moved the vent to the front of the loudspeaker. It was on the rear. And just like we've done with Debut 2.0, it's been done in response to suggestions, uh, wishes from customers as to the placement of the speakers. How close can the speaker go to the wall without choking off the vent or altering the bass performance too much? And clearly in that regard, having a front firing vent uh, makes that easier. And in a three-way system, you don't have to worry so much about mid-range leakage coming through the vent because the crossover prevents any mid-range frequencies getting into that speaker and so they can't therefore come out of the vent. So front firing, it's flared on the inside and the outside to minimize noise and give us better bass dynamics. And that's combined with uh, more sturdy 
construction of the cabinet. We don't want the cabinet to be making its own noises, its own contribution to the sound. And so we've stiffened it up with better bracing in the cabinet, uh, which aligns with the mid-range chamber that's constructed as part of the cabinet to really make the speaker very solid. So overall, great number of changes to contribute to improving the performance of Unify 2.0.